Welcome to M&A Mondays, the UK's first YouTube series dedicated to all things M&A. From interviews with the leading figures in the industry, to coffee chats with analysts, diversity panels, all the way through to workshops, we'll be covering it all. We do hope you enjoy the video and please give us a like and a follow on our social media. Thank you very much. Hi everybody, thank you for joining this week's episode of M&A Mondays, the UK's first YouTube series dedicated to all things M&A. My name is Patrick Gorton and I'm the founder and co-head of the UCL M&A group and alongside me is Yash Parikh, the other founder and co-head. Today we are absolutely delighted and honoured to be joined by Philip Noblet. Philip graduated from the University of Cambridge with an MA in law and began his career at the law firm Slaughter & May. After leaving the firm in 1992, he's had an incredibly accomplished uh, career within finance, having he held several positions such as co-head of M&A in, in the US for Deutsche Bank, chairman and co-head of EMEA M&A uh, for Bank of America, and vice chairman and co-head of EMEA M&A for HSBC. So uh, Philip is currently the head of UK investment banking for Jefferies. We're incredibly delighted to have him with us today and we're very honoured. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, Philip, how are you? Very good, Patrick. Yash, good to, good to meet you. Um, it's a very busy time uh, across uh, the world in terms of M&A. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a timely time to be talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us again. We really appreciate it. Um, I guess the first question I wanted to ask you was that Having studied law at university and also practicing law early in your career, uh, what led you to switching to investment banking? So um, it's a good question. So, so I originally I was a mathematician when I was at school, uh, double maths, physics. Uh, I was one of those people, uh, and then then switched to uh, wanted to do law rather than do more maths. So when I went to Cambridge, I studied law, then went to law school and joined Slaughter of May. Uh, I was just after I uh, qualified as a solicitor at Slaughter of May, I was worked on my first ever hostile deal, which is a company called Williams Holdings, uh, which is made for Raycall Electronics, which is which is basically the, the pre-founder of Vodafone, uh, or precursor of Vodafone. And um, we were we made an offer, hostile offer that was rejected by the board of Raycall. And so we decided that we'd change the offer, which was made in all shares to make three or all shares and cash. And so about three o'clock in the morning, I'm in the basement of what was then called Morgan Grenfell, became Deutsche Morgan Grenfell and Deutsche Bank, uh, drafting the changes to the terms and conditions of the offer uh, with a, a former um, uh, classmate of mine from Cambridge who worked at Morgan Grenfell, worked at the bank. And he got, and we'd finished the meeting and so we had to start drafting all the terms and he got up to leave. And I said, where are you going? We, we haven't finished yet. And he said, no, no, you haven't finished yet. I have. And I thought, why? What? That's not right. What am I doing this for? So I decided that uh, once I'd finished that deal, I would see if they would uh, they'd be interested in hiring me. And thankfully they were. And uh, that was that was the, that was the moment. That's why, that's why I changed. I realized that uh, it was much more interesting to be on the on the deal side and have that client interaction than it was to be on the legal side. Yeah, absolutely. Well, no, thank you for that. I think that sounds uh, really exciting. I guess one thing that's quite um, notable about your um, about your experience is that you've worked in both the USA and the UK. And I guess that's something that we'd, we'd all love to do to be able to work in New York. Um, were there any major differences or challenges working as a banker across the pond? Uh, the, the challenge when I got back was I had to be considerably less aggressive. My, my boss, when I got back, said to me, uh, I came back to Merrill Lynch in, in no four and uh, to run, run sponsor uh, by m and in Europe. And uh, after the first meeting, my boss turned to me and went, you got to be less aggressive, please. Uh, so yeah, so they, so uh, look, I, I think that working in New York is is, uh, is fantastic. And um, 10 years, 
uh, both at, at Deutsche Mall and Grenfell, then at, then at uh, the Merrill was, uh, was was a very exciting time. It was the time of the tech boom uh, and, and 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 bubble burst. Uh, so we you know we saw a lot of deals. We had uh, I worked very closely with Frank Quatrone and his guys. Um, uh, so there was uh, never a dull moment with Frankie um, uh, on some pretty amazing tech deals, even by today's standards. Uh, yeah, and, and but generally, you know, it's uh, it's 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 a lot more uh, did, a, did a lot more aggressive in the US uh, in terms of negotiation and um, it's a bit more measured here in the UK but uh, but I enjoyed both experiences enormously thank you fantastic that, that seems quite interesting and the fact that you've worked at numerous firms throughout your career um, so Merrill Lynch uh, Deutsche Bank what do you think uh, differentiates Jefferies uh, now that you're at Jefferies from the other firms that you've worked at in your career um, a complete lack of bureaucracy, for one. Uh, it's um, the beauty about Jefferies is it's a pure investment bank. So the only thing that we do is is sales and trading and investment banking, right? Which is leverage finance, equity capital markets, and M and A. Um, and because of that, uh, because of our uh, the, the way the firms run, Rich Handler, our CEO, who you probably see on the, on the Wall Street Confessions website and uh, Instagram site, amongst other, he's quite a by a character and, and um, Brown Freeman, our president, you know, they really instill a very entrepreneurial spirit in, in every MD. Uh, and that comes across. We have we have enormous sector depth. Um, we have great research. We have a great equities platform. Uh, but there is, you know, having worked at, uh, when Merrill got bought by Bank of America, I remember being on my first complex call uh, in January of 2009 and 11 lawyers joined. And I was like, oh, this sounds different to Merrill Lynch. And, and, and Jefferies is a lot like Merrill Lynch used to be back in the back in those days. So, you know, highly, high, very sector driven in terms of deep knowledge, um, great equities platform, fantastic MA franchise, um, lots of uh, private equity deals, which really drive the firm, especially in the US, but also increasingly public MA deals, which is why I was brought in to, 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 with, with my team. Um, to, uh, to to join Jeffries in Europe to to really build the the UK public company side, um, but it's um, yeah it's a it's a breath of fresh air uh, to be to, versus um, some of the some of the the organisations, especially organisations that lend a lot of money, right? Whether it's Bank of America, HSBC, it's um, they have a very different mentality and approach to uh, to the way investment banking fits in with that lending business. Not that you know it's fine, it works for some people, but. Um, I, I, I'm sort of a pure M and A guy for 30 years, and just wanted to do that. So it's the right place to be doing it. That's fantastic. And having a look through your career, have you've held numerous leadership positions, uh, such as chairman and co-heading uh, certain divisions? Uh, what do you think has helped you in these leadership positions in terms of skills? And what would a typical day look like uh, currently for you uh, as the head of banking in the UK for Jefferies? Uh, tolerance, especially around bonus time, patience. Uh, no, the uh, so look, I think that uh, uh, yeah, it, it's it you know uh, it is um, it, it does does require a, a, a lot of um, uh, keeping all the members of the team sort of in the right frame of mind, especially during this lockdown period. Investment banking is all about teams, um, and you know it's hard, especially you know for the analysts in particular who are working remotely, uh, guys that are not much older than, than, than you two, um, you know, sort of, it, it, you want to keep that team dynamic going. And it's a lot easier, obviously, to, to learn the business when you're all sitting together and you can just, you, you can listen to conversations people are having and various things. So, so I spent a lot of time making sure um, that, uh, you know, that everyone's sort of mentally healthy um, uh, during the day. Um, but most of, so, but boy, my time is split sort of, um, on origination, about half to half my time, and that's sort of um, getting the firm aligned and behind certain situations where we, whether it's a, an IPO or or, a, or an M and A situation, um, and then the half of my time is spent sort of doing pure execution. Um, so this this week we announced a, 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 a we're advising a company called Scapper, which has been bought by a US firm. Uh, called uh, called SWM. Last week we advised IG Group when they bought Tasty Trade. So there's a lot of execution going on, uh, and then a lot of the origination um, 
for my time and then layer on, layer on top of that sort of keeping the team together uh, in the right way um, and that's uh, yeah, it, which, is, which is very important. Brilliant. Um, I guess the next question is um, um, how has the course of your career and how do you see the industry changing perhaps in the next five to ten years? Sorry Patrick, you broke up a bit there at the beginning. Apologies. Um, it was um, how have you seen the industry change over the course of your career and how you see it kind of moving? Yeah, I, so look, I think that um, uh, it has it has changed a lot. Um, I think you know it's clearly there's got a, a lot more um, there's a lot more regulation uh, than there ever was um, when I first started. Uh, I, I think that you know the there were you know back in the, when in, in the sort of the nineties you know outright hostile deals were very common in the UK. Now you know absent you know a couple of. Recent one to the Garda, uh, we're advising Garda World and BC Partners in their hostile bid for G4S at the moment, um, uh, which is but you very see very rarely do you see outright hostile deals um, like that. You see, you see a lot of them in the 90s, um, a lot of, uh, and so that 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 has that has changed significantly. Um, you see, obviously, you see a, a lot more private equity. I remember famously once. Um, Telling the uh, the founder of TPG that that the prime actually would you know would just took, they just took too long they wanted too much due diligence it would never catch on that was back in '93 he's now a billionaire so what do I know uh, so um, but yeah so the, the, and the, that wall of private equity money uh, that just increases and increases every year is making a very big difference to to you know the dynamics around you know who's who what what buyers are um and it goes in ways but you know that the, obviously the because of the, the leverage and the low interest rate environment that's been around for you know now where are we 12 years um essentially then then these guys are very competitive against strategics and they never used to you know they, they were not mm -hmm. used to, um, back in those days so yeah so you, i think those the, the, the biggest changes are uh, is that there's the shift in um, the way um, you know the the the, the universe of uh, of buyers around M and A, um, and that's that's probably what we've seen the most. Okay, great. Thank you. I guess the last question from me would be: uh, out of all of the transactions that you've advised on over the course of your career, is there any you could tell us that might be the most exciting? Um, that's a good question. So. Yeah, look, I mean, I've I've, I've been I'm very fortunate to be involved in uh, in some some really interesting transactions. Um, yeah, I uh, I advised a uh, a Chinese billionaire back in 2014 when he bought House of Fraser, um, where you know all the uh, all the negotiations were conducted in the presidential suite in a London five star London hotel uh, at about four in the morning, um, and then. I think we we had a we had Chinese TV filmed the signing ceremony. Um, uh, that was you know that was one of the more interesting things I've ever done. A uh, very dynamic guy who uh, who made a lot of money, so it was fascinating being around him and uh, and those things. So that 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 was great. I suppose the uh, one of the most difficult deals that I ever did was I sold um, uh, Iceland Foods. Um, which had fallen into the into the hands of uh, three Icelandic banks. That um, uh, as uh, when the um, Icelandic PE firm collapsed, uh, and I sold that back to their founder. Uh, the founder didn't wanted to buy it a lot cheaper than I sold it to them for, uh, Malcolm Walker. So um, I feature in his book in a fairly um, uh, unpleasant way for me, uh, as to Mr. Mr. Walker was not impressed with me. It was not impressed with the price he had to pay the Icelandic banks either. So, uh, but that that was, you know, that, that's very interesting. That was, you know, he, they didn't want to have due diligence. They didn't want, you know, private equity to be involved. They didn't want any of the supermarkets to be involved. So, you know, that was that was a real knife edge transaction right to the very end. And uh, and that's probably one of the most interesting things um, that 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 I've done on the on the private side. Then, then on the public side, I guess I did. We said there are not many hostile bids. I have done a few. Um, I advised the Korean National Oil Company when they bought a, a company called Dana Petroleum, um, which was which was purely hostile. The, the founder of Dana Petroleum, one of the major shareholders, public company in the UK, he um, 
he did not want to sell the company under almost any circumstances. And uh, we had a big negotiation um, in Canada, of all places, because they had some oil wells in Canada. Um, and the negotiation was very bad and, and fell apart. And then I found myself sitting next to him on the plane on the way back, which made for a, a very interesting plane journey, uh, whilst he told me uh, just uh, what he thought of me and uh, my clients. So that was, um, that. yeah, I've had some, yeah, there's been some, uh, some interesting deals over the years. Awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic hearing about your experiences. And from, from what I gather from it, it seems that there can be times of challenges when, when trying to close these deals. Um, so it leads me on to my next question, which was and my final question, which is what advice would you give to students which are looking to break into investment banking and what can they expect personally from the industry itself? So look, I, you know, I think that the, the, that the industry, to, you know, to go back to your previous question, is in, is in very healthy form. And I think although that, you know, it, it has uh, changed a lot, I think it's still a, a great career for someone who really enjoys sort of the art of deal making and, and, uh, uh, in, and you get to learn about, you know, lots of different sectors that you just never thought you would. I've got universal knowledge of appliances, which is absolutely useless, but very, but uh, <laughs> it's one of the deals that I've done. Um, I think that for you know for, for for someone you know you, it's really important to get the um, the in, an internship uh, and and I, I recognise that that's hard. Uh, but any experience, I think Patrick, you're going to Rothschild, is that right? Um, to my friend Mr. Lightow, good luck with that. Uh, uh, but you know, and and just to try and see as much of it as you can, right? I think we, I encourage our guys when we hire them as analysts to get as a broad a spread of experiences as possible. Because you know, I do M and A, so I think that's the best thing ever. But you know, there's there's a lot of different paths in banking, and I think that you should you know try and see as many of them as you can. Which is why joining a country team like like ours is is a good place to start because you do see all sorts of different deals with all sorts of different kinds of clients in all sorts of different sectors. So, um, but yeah, but I think as as a student, you know, you know, and recognizing that the interview process is horrendous for these things because I I do it. Um, but you know, the more you understand about, you know, if you're really interested in it, then that always comes across when you interview. Um, and you know, I think if you're thinking, oh, it's a, it's a good way of making some money, I think that that's that's not that's that's not going to get you very far. But um, if you've got a real interest in whatever it is, IPO, equity, or debt, or M and A, I think that really comes across with 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 the successful candidates that get to, certainly get through to our. Our, uh, our internship program, um, and and so yes, I, I think that you know make sure that you you're well read, you understand, you find find a situation that you you know that you you know that could be the the ongoing if you know, GameStop and 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 Black BlackBerry um, debacle that's going on in the states and and the impact you know, but, but really um, I, I encourage you know any student to, who wants to get an internship and explore whether investment banking is right for them to just really um, come well prepared in terms of what, what's going on in the in the market. Um, no, no one expects you to be a market genius, um, but it's just you know that level of enthusiasm and interest always comes across with the best candidates. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Philip. And we'd like to thank you as well for taking the time uh, to join us today. Uh, your answers and your comments are very inf insightful, and I hope that our viewers today will uh, enjoy watching this video when we release it. Um, yeah, so thank you very much once again, Philip, for joining us and for the viewers watching it, please give the video a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Thank you both very much.